Good morning, traders and traders. Y'all know it is June costing back with another banger. All right. So we had a good vibe with this on Friday. Now we call this out from Thursday night analysis for this Friday move. And man, man, man. I'm very, very good at my entries right now, but whew, I need to come up with a system to maximize profit, you know what I mean? Because remember, initially we were looking at some move right here. When this move took place, I think this happened around with the with the interest rate for the um for the Bank of Japan, right? And from there, from that move right here, from here to about here. That's like 330 pips. Uh, but I'm working on that. You know, I mean, so I'm good. I'm good at my entries. I'm good at um, not getting stopped out. Um, that type of stuff. You know, I mean, good at uh, making quick profits. But we really don't want to maximize. You know, I mean, the highest potential from the from the pair GBP JPY. So I could have got entries here, held it, and then again I could have got entries again at this zone at that area. And then a third potential entry where I'm gonna explain right now to continue up. But hey, um, we're just gonna trade and learn, right? So let's just go together. You know what I mean? And the greatest thing that I have a system that it's not a losing system, but we want to continue to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better, all right? So, so that's what we're working on. So let's just continue to grow as a community, all right? Let's continue to grow as a movement, yeah? All right, so. I said buys above here, all right? So, y'all see how that played out. All right, so let's remove this. All right, it's no longer relevant. Let's extend this, all right? Let's change this. I like to use um, blue for, for the demand and gray for the supply. And that's just my style. Uh -huh. So we're in a we're in an option. Don't technical up trade, right? Just trade with the trend. And I mean I'm I'm just a huge fan of the trading with the trend. You know what I mean? The trend is your friend until then, you know what I mean? Alright, so all I want to do right now is allow price to come back the trend. Alright? Simple as that. All I want to do is allow price to come back the trend. Right? This is a high. You cannot buy at an high. Remember, in an uptrend price, make higher highs and higher lows, right? You buy at the higher low, right? You buy at the higher low. You do not buy at the high, right? And vice versa, if you're in a downtrend, price make lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower, lower highs, lower lows, and so on, right? You sell at the lower high, right? You sell at the lower high. You do not try to sell at the low, right? So we're at a higher high, so we can't buy the right? So all they got to do is wait for price to retrace. Yeah. Retrace come back to trend. Back on this on the um, demand zone right here. And then you can buy from there. Alright? Back up to here. Alright. Just keep it simple. Let's just keep it simple. Yeah? Don't try technical up the thing, yeah? So to be told, you could like start looking for buys, you know, somewhere around this region, right? Let's just see how GJ act around this region right here, 183, 936. Alright. 183, 936. Yeah. Let's see how GJ act around that region, 183, 936. Yeah. Y'all know what you want to see when, when it retrace. Alright. So let's check out the, the overall movement y'all know that gj likes to retrace 60 percent we spoke about that let's check that 60 percent there we go 60 percent right so gj likes to retrace there around the 60 percent region not 50 not 40 gj is a 60 percent retracement here although i know this because i've been trading the pair for four years so i mean after that time you know you get to you know get to adopt so when it retrace right here you want support to be far you want support to become on the demand zone. So you want a bearish candle closure at the bottom, bullish candle closure, wick at the bottom, and then you look for your buy continue, right? So this entire move, right? This entire move from about here to about here, that's 
170 pips. But you know what I mean? You can look to take a profit somewhere about 100 pips, 50 pips. You know what I mean? Just go base off, you know what I mean? Just base off your feeling, you know what I mean? So just keep it simple, right? Don't technical of the team. You know, I'm a huge fan of not technical enough team. Just really keep it simple. Notice all my chart breakdowns are just pretty straightforward and simple, right? It's not technical or anything like that. Yeah. All you need to do is just keep it simple, right? So we're doing the same process because I realize when I put these nice with the line of the errors and so on, it make it with, with the specific um, coordinates and all of that to make it much easier for you guys, right? So what's the rule? Once you get retraces, you wait for support to form, you're looking for buys anywhere above you know, 183, 936 or somewhere around here going up, right? If for some reason, if for some reason, listen carefully now, if for some reason this demand zone doesn't hold and it fails, all you have to do is wait for the breaker structure, right? All you have to do is wait for the breaker structure. So let's work for the breaker structure, right? Let's work for the breaker structure. All you have to do is wait for price to push, break the demand zone, right? Hold on, let me do that again. All right, wait for price to push. Let's get this right, come on now, stop playing me. Wait for price to push, break the, break the demand zone, retrace, create a lower high, confirming the basic trading for a downtrend, and then you will sell, continue down, right? So that's what you look for if price doesn't respect you. Just be patient, just wait on the right thing, guys, right? So when price breaks here, you want it to come back to this zone right here, you want top projections, right? Top projections, right? So you want bullish candle closure, top projection, bearish candle closure, top projection. Once you get those candle closures, then you just continue down for the sell. So a potential sell move like this is gonna run. So you can run another 200 points, right? So just keep it simple. I know potentially you might get up and you might be tempted to like go oh, and you know try to sell from there and yeah that could work and all of that, right? But let me tell you how GJ operates. Yeah? Let me tell you how GJ operates. What might happen is that you try to sell by like, coming down and then push back up, take out the stop loss, push come down, you try to sell again, push back up, take before it actually comes here and start to respect, right? So it's very tricky when it's retracing, see? Like, clear example, coming down, take it out, coming down, take out the stop loss. You know what I mean? It's very tricky. But notice when it comes here, you now you start to get a bottom rejection, higher maintenance level, bottom rejection, then you buy it. You know what I mean? Just keep it simple. You understand? Just keep it simple. Right? GJ, uh, let's look at this retracement down back to this. So, this is a demand zone right here, right? Look at the retracement back, right? Taking it out, taking out the stop loss, taking out the stop loss. You get what I'm saying? So that used to happen to me a lot, so that's why I don't do that anymore, you know what I mean? I know coming back down, you're looking at a nice, probably 190 to 100 pips, but I just chill, you know what I mean? I just trade the trend, you know what I mean? And the trend is my friend until the end, and this will be the end. So if it comes right here, create a higher low, and it breaks that higher low, come, come back here, create a low high. All right, once it breaks that higher low, then the definition of an option is no longer valid. So it's at that point, the trend is no longer my friend. So I'm just trading with the trend until the end, right? So we're looking for buy movements. So that's the first option for potentially. Um, if it breaks, breaks the demand, so just wait for it. Ship retest the low high, wait for resistance for me and continue down. All right, quick announcement, quick announcement. Today is the start of the daylight saving time, the change of the daylight saving time for the United States of America, Canada, and so on, right? So you're going to notice that your four-hour candles open one hour later and so on. If you're trading the U.S. pairs, you know that um, the, the pre-New York is going to be one hour later. And when you're open, it's going to be um, one hour later. So um, everything is that has moved to one hour. So last week was the daylight saving time change for the U.K. And now we're looking at the daylight saving time for you so everybody you now has moved back one hour so let's pay attention to that right so you have to pay attention to that 
And then the next thing now, you know, we have to look at our calendar because it's the start of the week, right? So we have to be mindful of what is going on. So let's see what's going on for this week. All right. So Monday, don't really have much going in, in terms of news events. No, not looking bad, not looking bad at all. So we can get some nice trade out on Monday, Tuesday at Free London. There's some clear enough news event that can push price, but not not that, that specific type of news event that might significantly impact us with slippage and so on. Uh, we got Wednesday, right? Nice clean Wednesday as well. Nice clean Wednesday. All right. We got Powell speaking for the DXY at 9:15. So, but by, by that time, we'll be, our entry will be long gone. You know what I mean? Our entry will be long gone. We'll probably be entering a pre New York if we decide to go on Wednesday. So that's, so that's clean as well. Thursday, we have initial jobless claims. So remember, initial jobless claims normally comes out at 7 30. Now you realize it's coming out at 8 30 because of the change of the daylight saving time. All right. We have Paul speaking again at, at 2 p.m. Normally, we got 1 p.m. daylight saving time change. So, Friday. All right. So, Friday now we have some heavy impact news coming out of pre London with gross domestic products. So, interest rate is the first strongest, and then you have gross domestic product GDP right there. All right. So, you have to be careful. So, it's like interest rate, GDP, CPI, you know what I mean? Those are strong impact news. So, you have to be very mindful of them, right? So GDP coming out at pre-London on Friday. So we're going to be very careful around pre-London, right? Very, very careful on Friday around pre-London. And right, so we'll probably don't trade this. And um, if you do decide to trade it, you will. So what I like to do, I can give you a quick thing. Just wait 15 minutes. If you see, if you see, if price has gone away, if price is gone, you just, you just let it be. You know what I mean? If you want to trade the news, then drop your risk. That's that's another that's another way to trade it. But if you really want to use the same high risk, what you can do is that you can wait at um till after 15 minutes to see if there's still market structure lined up for you. And then now uh, you can enter after 15 minutes after the slippage time pass up. That's a that's a tip right there, right? But for me, I just I just let it be, you know what I mean? I don't try to chase it. Right, so we're good for, for every single day of the week except Friday at pre-London, where we got to be very mindful that those domestic products is coming up, alright? So, you know the vibes, just ask any questions in the comment section. I'm here to answer. Reach out to me on social media. You know what I mean? I'm very responsive. Right? Um, now, you know, we have the blue check right now. So, you know, it's less of a worry about um, scammers and all of that. So, I'm more responsive right now. Right? Because people actually know that it's me, Joey Posty. Until tomorrow. Through your morning, no starting. I'm out.